what's up michael it's youtube welcome back to the channel today we're going to be looking at the newest position in my growth portfolio dropbox and i'm going to go over why i like this stock and why i think it's undervalued guys we're going to check that out in a minute but look obviously we have another no face video so go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for not being able to see my ugly mug and uh if you want to go ahead and hit the red subscribe button you guys know we're trying to hit 2000 by the end of the month so we're getting closer and closer every day thank you so much for your support if you want to support this channel even more more than just watching these videos liking and subscribing go ahead and hit one of the links in the description guys if you use one of those links like robin hood you sign up using the link you get a free stock if you sign up using webull you deposit your first hundred dollars you get four free stocks if you sign up using acorns you get five dollars for free and if you sign up using m1 finance you'll get ten dollars for free and if you sign up using the coinbase link in the description you'll get ten dollars worth of free bitcoin once you make your first initial deposit of a hundred dollars you buy a hundred dollars worth of crypto so yeah guys enough of that let's get to it so you guys know what dropbox is it's a cloud computing service basically a cloud service you store stuff you can send stuff back and forth but check this out so on the day we are up a little bit half a percent look at look at the overall in the past year into january beginning of march we've seen a 30 percent drop as well as most of the stock market if not more we did see a little rebound coming back then after the summer come uh, you know the fall winter we've seen quite a big drop you know 20 percent, 25 percent drop and then now we're back up around the 22 dollar range but look let's look at the max five years this is another reason why I'm looking into this stock right now, guys. The IPO was March 23rd, 2018, um, and it was around 30 bucks that day. It shot up to around $40, and then it's just been slowly going down ever since, but that doesn't mean that this is a dead company. Generally, it's hard to find these undervalued companies that are below their IPO uh, price, okay? Well, if we look at this here, market cap is $9.13 billion. PE ratio shown here is 111, but that is a uh, trailing PE. That's not the forward. I'll show you the forward here in a little bit. No dividend yield. And 52 week low is $14.55. 52 week high is $25.16, guys. So looking at the EPS uh, is 19 cents here. Looking at, again here, as you can see, the PE ratio is 113%, but that is, of course, trailing PE. That's not the forward PE. Um, looking at the performance outlook, two to six weeks, is should it's uh, not looking great. But midterm to long term, which is what I'm looking on holding this for, should be a tremendous upswing. <laughs> yeah, um, looking at the EPS for the previous quarters, Q4 2019, it beat by two cents. Uh, Q1. 2020 beat by three cents q2 2020 beat by five cents q3 2020 beat by eight cents so that is that's good we want to continually be beating the expectations we know sometimes it's not always that easy but hey looking at the annual revenue and earnings we can see the revenue is definitely ramping up the earnings here not so much they're still in the negative here but when we look at the quarterly for this year first quarter down 6.6 6 million and then we're in the green 339 million 17 million of course we're going to see this that you know the drop because of the whole virus and everything and then we see another ramp back up 32 million so they're back above here so i'm excited to see what q4 is going to bring us bring us for 2020 guys so looking at the forward pe ratio remember this is the trailing pe this is the forward pe forward pe is 23 that is extremely uh, cheap that's undervalued guys and it's hard to find something undervalued especially for a growth stock such as this it is a growth stock because it is relatively new we're gonna look at the free cash flow and the cash flow and all that in a little bit i think that's our next two slides but looking at that 23 it's hard to find something with this value and this growth potential to have a forward pe ratio of you know 23 that's in the sweet zone right there 23 right looking at a little bit of the balance sheet so looking at 2019 as of the end of 2019 total assets was 2 billion 699 million which is hey that's uh that's getting up there right i mean the market cap on this company is 9 billion so its total current assets though was roughly half of that so total current would be 1.243 billion it's good right current assets would be everything they'd be able to get a hold of liquidate 
pretty quickly if they needed cash. And then non-current would be, you know, long-term stuff like that. Its total debt is $1 billion. So, so if we look at total assets minus the total debt, that'll leave us with $1,692,500,000 left over. That, that, that would be them completely out of debt. And this would be the money that they have left over from that. So that's a good sign. They're in the positive. That's what you want to see. You don't want to get in the negative unless, you know, we know that at t is in the negative a lot. It's, it's way deep in the negative, but that is still, that's a company I'd still be willing to buy. Looking at the cash flow, operating cash flow has gone up through the years. And as you can see, as of today, it is definitely going up as well. So looking at the free cash flow, this is another good thing to see. This is basically the free money left over after everything is paid. This is the money that they can invest back into the company. And if they wanted to pay a dividend with and all that, but I don't expect them to pay a dividend anytime soon, being that this is still relatively a newer company as far as IPO company, right? Still growing. That's why we're looking at it for growth potential. So 2017 to 2018 has been going up. 2018 to 2019 is going up. And it's going up close to 100 million as of 2019 to today, guys. So we should see exactly what 2020 uh, is going to be next year. So we should show with this, 2020 should be well ahead of the game. And this is due to also management in the company, right? They're keeping a strict you know, hold on this balance sheet here. But let's take a little look at this here. This is the global collaboration platform at a scale. 600 million registered users, 550 billion pieces of content, 15.25 million paying users, 80% of subscribers use us for work. So that is awesome. You guys know with everything going on, everything is moving to the cloud. Everything is moving to um, well, I say everything, but a lot of things are moving to a, you know, working from home, working away from the work spot. And this is definitely going to be a major player, in my opinion, in the next coming years. So they have an open egos ecosystem. So this is Dropbox and it can conduct business with every single one of these uh, companies here. So 60 billion plus API calls a month. And an API call is basically this It's basically meaning when dropbox communicates or does any type of talking or back and forth with any of these companies or any company that it mess it, it works with that's one api call so 60 plus billion a month that is that's big numbers 85 percent of active paid dropbox teams have linked to a third party app and one million plus of registered developers that is that's a lot guys looking at some of the growth drivers uh, to convert drive registered users to become paying users on individual and team plans upsell promote existing paying users to upgrade to premium plans and purchase additional licenses all right and the innovate this is what they're doing now and this is what they're trying to innovate towards new product experiences leverage scale and use insight to enhance existing products and drive adoption to of new ones and this is another big one right here guys expand the ecosystem grow thriving ecosystem to put dropbox at the center of the users lives that's a bold statement to make that is a big statement to make almost like how apple has done with their uh you know they have apple watch uh macbook iphone all of that icloud itunes okay that's quote unquote at the center of users lives that may be what uh dropbox is trying to do obviously they're not going to make phones or whatever uh, who knows they might one day but i doubt it deep integration partners google zoom microsoft better clouds salesforce <laughs> whatever this is slack adobe and actually guys i i had slack in my growth portfolio and i got out of it to get uh to to replace it with dropbox and that's going to be roughly six percent of my portfolio for my m1 finance portfolio my growth portfolio so go check out that portfolio uh go check out that playlist guys i'm sure you'll you'll find some great value out of that but so zoom or not zoom google and microsoft is dropbox's two biggest biggest competitors but at the same time it's working with them right all the competitors are working together which is uh crazy right it's um let's look at some of these financial highlights they have for us 
So the revenue, obviously 2017, 2018, 2019. Boom, look at that. I can't wait to see what 2020 is going to bring us. It may have doubled from the 2017 area. 14% uh, year-over-year growth in Q3 2020. Operating income 2020 is 60 million, 170 million to 205 million. Now look at this target model they're looking for. Annual free cash flow 392 million dollars cash. I think right now they're like four. What, what do we say? Four, uh, 400 million, something like that. The long-term target 1 billion, being that this is a nine billion dollar company, uh, you know, market cap company. They may be able to do it. You know, it's definitely a growth company. I definitely think we can see this company at least double within the next year or so, which I'm hoping happens. Well, guys, that is it for this video. Like I said, I this is going to be roughly 6% of my portfolio. Um, I'll probably do a, within the next month or so, do another video on my M1 Finance. You know, a little update on it. You guys know. Uh, I like to do that periodically for that particular growth portfolio. But guys, look, if you enjoyed this video, if you got any type of value out of it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm because it really helps. Thank you for all the love you've been showing me, guys. It's amazing. I'm hoping I'm bringing the best content that I possibly can to you. I know I am. Uh, anyway, if you are still watching and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Turn it gray to join the little family we have going on, guys. I, once again, I appreciate y'all. If you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me, go ahead and click one of these videos. Let me know in the comments below also what you thought about what you think about Dropbox. And is it something that you're looking forward to? Is it in the cloud space? For you like do you have any cloud space stocks you should is basically what i'm trying to tell you maybe not dropbox but let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this and you know what you own in the cloud space area but uh yeah guys look i'm gonna get out of here peace love and prosperity guys